We are live. Uh, Team Victus podcast number one. Uh, excited to have everybody here. Jason was already using some of his great material in advance, so I feel like we missed out on some uh, lovely things here. But we're going to go we'll go around the horn and uh, introduce everybody. I'm Zeb. Uh, work with Victus, uh, the parent company Yield Scientific, and the private equity group that's uh, behind them. Uh, Jason, who are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Zeb's friend that just can't say no to anything. So that's led to a lot of things over the years. Uh, I think since I've known Zeb, I've been electrocuted, I've jumped over fire, and I've been dunked into an ice bath. Yeah. And that was all just one event. So uh, we got to get away from this, guys. I don't know how this keeps happening. But now I'm on a podcast. So yeah, a Victus podcast. I love it. All right. Our intern, Josh. Who are you, Josh? Tell everybody. All right. Hey, I'm Josh. I'm currently interning for Victus. I uh, am a, a huge CrossFit enthusiast and just love it. So awesome. And then Brooklyn, our our, our uh, what would you what would you say? Not just brand manager, uh, also helps out the team with a number of other different things for our our private equity group. And, and, and the token female to make sure we have some diversity at this panel, right? Yep, yep, sure. Yeah, I, I make some of the calls around here, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just graduated from college last year. So I just came on as an executive assistant, a brand manager. So it's been a crazy, um, you know, past three to four months with COVID, but we're working our way through it. So that's right. So we've been talking about doing a Team Victus podcast for a while now. Um, come to the point when we realized it's uh, we've got a great number of uh, not only team members, but also uh, athletes, friends, partners, uh, business managers that we can turn to, um, CEOs, uh, we can turn to for business advice and uh, decided now's the time. And so the focus of this is going to be on uh, living victorious, uh, Team Victus and in, in, in all things that we do. Uh, sometimes we're going to talk about the really good stuff in our lives. Sometimes we're going to talk about this shit didn't didn't go the well the way we wanted it to. So, um, like the way Jason drinks out of his uh, Victus water bottle over there. But brand, brand, brand placement. Does anybody else wake up with like a crick in their neck this morning, or is it just me? Oh I should be God. all right. I'll be okay. Uh, just a little. God, this stuff really really keeps me moving, guys. Oh, immediately better. Hey, oh, immediately. You guys should sell this stuff. Jason, I, I got to ask you, it looks like you have your ears pierced or you were like living in, you know, like the people in, in Africa with like the, maybe, maybe you don't have to be in Africa. Like some of the folks that are, um, you know, recreational ear piercing, like hoop holders, whatever that's called. Is that what you're going for there? No, you know, so I look like a barista at a Starbucks with these, but no, I am a, uh, I'm a kind of a Microsoft guy. These are their surface ear pods. So they kind of just live there in the ear all day. And man, that stuff's got a soothing. I mean, that is that's a minty feel to it. I love it. Uh, but yeah, that's I I live with these in my ears. I forget they're there. The barista, the barista at uh, Starbucks was a nice touch. There you go. I like that. <laughs> hey, and we've got a team member missing right now. Uh, Barry Wynn. Barry woke up with a massive migraine headache. He does all of our uh, all of our digital media, all our social media. Um, kind of the, the, the brains behind a lot of the creative that goes on, uh, creates a lot of our imagery, uh, all the stuff you see behind behind Jason right now. So unfortunately, Barry can't make it, which is a total bummer, uh, at least for podcast number one, which is, it basically means we can make fun of him the whole time, which we were <laughs> probably going to do anyway. So I'm just glad it's not me. So I'll take it. Yeah, which I'll get mine. I know. So um, I don't know. Let's, let's start off like, what's everybody, uh, what's everybody been doing for activity recently? Uh, I woke up this morning. I went for a 30 minute swim because the rest of my body feels kind of jacked up. And the guy who was going to open our CrossFit gym here in Aiken for a 6 a.m. class said he hurt himself falling off like a scooter yesterday. So I went. Uh, I went to the pool and Been went there. for a 30 minute went for a 30 minute swim. Today. <laughs> Jason, what'd you do this morning? I, I got a text from from you. Yeah. No. I. Um, so I'm. I, uh, I have a Peloton subscription. I don't have a bike. I found out you could do that today. So that for $13 a month, I have access to their entire library of uh, exercise and media. And, uh, you know, I did a pretty tough ass workout. I mean, I, I didn't know they were all going to be that hard. So I'm pretty, 
pretty stoked about what's coming forward. I'm trying to remember what was the name of that one. It was the it was one of their yoga classes. Recovery yoga. Recovery yoga. Yeah. So a lot of savasana, which is um, not just a salad dressing, and a lot of uh, they call it child's pose, which is more challenging than most people think. So. Uh, real, real strenuous morning. Plus I chase a toddler around. So that's most of my cardio these days. So I was going to say you get really big cardio workout on, uh, on child's pose and in, in yoga, right? I mean, Elliot's getting heavy. So at least this side of my body, the pick up the kid side ripped, super ripped. Ready for the Olympics. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's calm down. I don't know about that. Unless there's like a baby Olympics. So which I would totally put my child in. Now, now hold on. Technically, we're, we're going to get to you in a second, uh, Josh, but technically we did the Fat Boy Olympics a couple of years in a row, Jason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, so I surprised everyone when I didn't win because um, apparently I can't fit that many donuts in my mouth, which I'm proud of to some degree. I am. So I, I forget who – there give was a some, trophy. Give, give some context around what the Fat Boy Olympics were, Jason, because most people don't know. Yeah, we tried to generate something I could actually win um, that sounded like a sport. And so Zeb and a couple of the other brain trusts from our UDIC crew created the Fat Boy Olympics. Um, there were a myriad of different challenges. Donut eating. Uh, didn't you have to like define the donut blindfolded, like what you were tasting? Um, I'm sure there was a heavy amount of drinking in there as well. Um I did not hold my own. And again, I, I disappointed a lot of the fans and I hope to get that donut shaped trophy very shortly. We, we haven't done that since the first year. We could probably do like a virtual version. Chris has the trophy. So if you're looking behind your back, you no longer, you're no longer the fattest or you do have it. Oh no. Oh boy. Oh gosh. Have you guys ever been to, to Zeb's place? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So can we talk about how many photos oh of, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. It looks like a Krispy Kreme. Look at that. You guys see that world champion. Oh, I love it. So what, what year was Chris? Who cares? Did he actually really win or did he stole the trophy? Oh, you just brought it last time. He probably tried to eat it. He probably did try to eat it. So and I do promise we're going to talk about this, but we got to kind of probably explain what the whole UDIC thing is. So we got a group of guys in CrossFit that we all kind of met in, in Indiana. And there was a great gym we were going to at the time called CrossFit Carmel. Um, and we all just got together and um, had a lot of fun and got some good fitness in. But uh, they had an event called the Gorgeous Ladies of CrossFit, which was uh, Glock, G-L-O-C for short. And we were sitting around one day actually kind of bummed because that event turned into this like massive, massive event across the Midwest and super successful. And people are coming from all over and, and we didn't get any attention and we got like to none. Do, we had nothing to do. We couldn't even, we could basically just go watch and cheer our friends on. So we got really angry, uh, not angry. <laughs> I'm going, no, angry stuff. Yeah, that works. Yeah. We were drinking beer saying we should really have our own thing we can do. So if there's the gorgeous ladies of CrossFit, we should be the, the ugly dudes of CrossFit. And then I think it was, I think it was Chris Mason who was like, don't just be the ugly dudes of CrossFit. You doc doesn't work. But if you were the ugly dudes in CrossFit, then we could be the you dicks. And all we could do is make fun of each other the whole time. So we are the you dicks, um, the ugly dudes in CrossFit and hopefully CrossFit. We're not, uh, we're not selling shirts. We're not trying to take any profit off this. This is just our uh, annoying group. Please don't no, no legal action now that Greg Glassman's gone. Thank goodness. We do have shirts though. Lots of shirts. We just don't sell them for profit. Um, so that's what this is. This is the, uh, it's the ugly dudes in CrossFit world championship for the fat boy Olympics. That's what this is. Yeah. All right. Enough, enough of Jason. I yapping. Josh, uh, you're, you're an intern, you're a CrossFit enthusiast. Uh, what, how'd you get involved in CrossFit, man? So it was actually a little less than a year ago. Um, so beforehand, I was actually in powerlifting and like a little bit of bodybuilding. Um, and that mainly came about because one of my friends in college wanted to uh, learn how to lift. And I knew how to lift um, in high school due to my wrestling background. So 
I ended up teaching him how to lift. I got really into it. Then I was like, okay, I'm just going to be a power lifter, do some bodybuilding on the side. Um, and then down the road, like usually the powerlifting and bodybuilding crowds, like a oh, CrossFit, it's not a workout or whatever. And then, so I'm like, watch the documentary on Netflix, um, the fittest. And I was like, okay, I, I really want to try this. This looks awesome. So ended up going to a local CrossFit box here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and, um, tried it died and I loved it so <laughs> I was just like okay I'm doing CrossFit from now on that is who I am um so and yeah you, like, you got your you got your level one cert or you're going to which have you done it yet yeah so um back in February actually before coronavirus broke out um I ended up going to CrossFit Pittsburgh um OG box here and uh getting my level one which was awesome it was an amazing experience um, Austin Maliolo was that. What, what was your favorite part of the whole the, the level one experience? Um, I got to talk to Austin a lot after uh, the class, like after the teaching and classes and everything. And um, like I brought up a couple of big like questions and points be like, hey, how do you take a beginner who wants to eventually become like a sanctionals athlete? How do you add that volume in and stuff like that? And um, he actually answered the question and then later on did his own podcast um, on that question, which was really cool. And then um, the next day, he's just like, Josh, we're going to get you your first strict ring muscle up. I'm like, oh, there's no way. <laughs> but um, yeah, so later that day, he put me on a stage in front of everyone there. And I was like, oh, God, I have to do it now. So <laughs> That's, that can be either the best or the absolute worst. It was nerve wracking. <laughs> Yeah, shame will motivate you. Yeah, that's that's basically how I got every PR I ever had. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what else will motivate you? You don't want to be the last guy uh, working at a train with Rich event ever. Nope, you do not. Zeb knows too much about that. Um, yeah, that was. I'm your. I'm. I, I consider myself one of Zeb's closest friends because he doesn't have many. Um, that was that was an embarrassing time for him. He didn't know because he was in the moment doing the wall balls, but I was like, oh God, he is doing wall balls next to Rich Froning and it did not look good, bro. I mean, that's that's just me being nice. Uh, so not at all. Yeah, yeah. Hey Music. Josh, Josh, can I ask questions? Are you the are you in charge? Can I can I no, ask questions? Josh, what's your friend time? My friend time. Oh geez. Um well, I retested over quarantine and I didn't have a barbell. So I Stall, you're stalling, bro. You're stalling on me. What's the time? <laughs> um, it was three minutes and 53. Holy man. Jeez. That's awesome, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, me too. Who's trying to lighten the blow? <laughs> Poor Brooklyn's sitting here going, this is why Brooklyn's great because, hey, Brooklyn, what's Fran? No clue. Ah, classic. <laughs> Awesome. Know what, um, wad was when I I was like, what are they talking about? What's this wad thing? About? Like a wad of what? Like <laughs> right, a wad of toilet paper. Nope. <laughs> yep, I'm clueless in that department. So that, I'm that's sure great. I'll come one day and figure it all out. But um, I started right before quarantine, so I really didn't have the opportunity to like go to gyms and listen in on things. So um, I have a CrossFit friend that I should probably have educate me, so I don't feel as dumb through this process, but. Um, I should probably start Googling too. It's going to be so cool. We're, we're going to bring Brooklyn to the next uh, train with Rich and she's just going to be looking around going, who, who, I don't get it. Like, who are these guys? Are they supposed to be important or something? Why don't they ever put a shirt on? <laughs> that was my, my takeaway. That's like right. jo Josh, you were at the training with Whit Rich, right? No. He's, he's going he's to come. He's coming in. Uh, in okay. In, in September, but I got, I got a, something we're going to require him to do, but that's a different, we'll, we'll get to that. Cause in a I, second. cause I didn't remember your face and I was like, maybe it's cause he's wearing a shirt. Maybe that's why I don't remember. <laughs> like we started naming people as, Oh, that's chest tattoo. That's skull on shoulder. You know, like that's how I knew him. Yeah. I mean, I mean. by the way, Jason really, you, you went on mute, but really quick, do you know that um, Gordy, we, so at this train with rich event, we just, uh, we came back from, uh, my buddy Chris Mason and obviously Jason and I went. There's three of us, and, and normally it's a team of four. 
and we just got absolutely annihilated. I mean, it was mm. punishing. Not that we were in, in amazing shape or anything, but it was just, it was, it was embarrassing. We scaled everything openly and, and openly shaved reps and still just got cheated. punished. We cheated. I thought they were going to ask us to leave. <laughs> it's not cheating if you if you tell everybody in advance you're going to do it. So it's, it's bad, not, guys. Sarge said there's no such thing as fitness shaming. So don't fitness shame me, okay? But the I, point was we were we were carrying this worm, which is this like 340 pound thing you have to do as a team. We're doing lunges, and we're with this guy named Gordy, and and Gordy was he was great. He was kind of quiet because um, he didn't. He's want a to coach. Play. He's a coach and a pretty, pretty fit dude. Yeah, pretty fit dude. But he was just having to deal with us as, as amateur athletes. <laughs> Sorry. So and, bad. And Gordy was in one of the photos recently, and I was just checking it. And sure enough, guess what's guess what Gordy's wife's social media handle is? Gordy's wife. <laughs> At Gordy's wife. And I pinged her, and I was like, this might be the greatest social media handle ever. So I we were sitting at dinner last night two nights ago and I turned to Barbara and I was telling her this whole thing. And I'm like, you should just be Zeb's wife. And she's like, absolutely not. So I tried to float that one. It didn't get anywhere. (laughs) I can literally see Barbara's just reaction without even being there. Oh man. (laughs) That would not be positive. No, I can't. Gordy's wife loved it. She said, everybody knows Gordy. So it just was the natural thing for her to pick. And it it made me smile. So so funny. anyway, you know, another, another tangent here, Um, Brooklyn, Tell us about, you've got a very interesting athletic background. Tell us, tell everybody what you uh, ha- did and do, because uh, it's really unique. Sure. Um, so I guess starting um, at just being little, little, uh, I started playing softball when I was like five, and then I switched to soccer, um, just kind of, you know, dabbling in everything like little kids do. Um, I feel like parents kind of just, if their kids don't have a specific direction that they want to go, and they just kind of have to try everything. So I did a little bit of volleyball. I ran track briefly uh, at a private school in a middle school. And then I found horses. Um, so I've been an avid equestrian for about 15 years now, and I'm 23. So if that says anything, I've been riding my entire life, but still trying things here and there. Never tried CrossFit. It's on the list. Um, so once you know all this social distancing stuff's over, I'm sure I'll go to a gym. Um, but I've been riding for a while. Um, I homeschooled through high school so that I could like ride, travel, compete. Um, I was really competitive. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really shaped me as a person. Um, I had to homeschool myself. So that was a challenging task through high school. Um, and were, then you, were, I, you, were you living at home? Where, where, tell everybody where home was and, and where you so were living at the time. My, my family raised me in Michigan. I moved to South Carolina when I was about 10. Um, my dad had a job that brought us down here. So we just took our family and kind of plopped in South Carolina. We lived in Lexington, so South Carolina. And I was training a little bit in Aiken before I started being what they call a working student. So I would go basically live in with families and it was mainly like I started off living um, near a place in I guess Camden was where I started and I worked there for like three years so I lived in how how old are you at this point if you're are you living with these guys yeah I was 15 so they had like a little house that I stayed in near the farm so they kind of covered my housing, but I worked like for free. Like it wasn't paid. So Wait a second. I, 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 I've known you for a long time. So I just got like, you were, you were 15 and you weren't even living at home. Yeah. So I was homeschooling by the age of 15. So. Not, homeschooling yourself. It's not like your parents were doing it for you. Yeah. So I had like, she, she's downplaying this horse thing. Something's going on here. This was a big deal. Like this was huge. She was it's she like it was my life from so early on. So it just feels like normal. Like that's just what should have happened. But um, so yeah, I like finished up eighth grade at a private school and then my parents didn't like shit me off or anything. Like it was very like I asked for it. Like I was like, please let me do this. Like this is what I love. Um, and it was just so expensive for me to be competitive at the level that I was competing. So they kind of just were like, here, we're going to find a great coach for you and a great trainer so that you can, you know, they would have clients, the trainers would have clients and they would have horses that needed to be horse shown and competed and ridden at home and, you know, trained. So I would train them at home and then ride them in competition. So it was just a great opportunity because I was riding, you know, half a million dollar animals, which was not possible 
financially for my parents, which is totally understandable, but it was just the way it had to be. So I would just live in with these people. So I lived in Camden for a few years and then I went and worked in Atlanta for a while. Wait, I, I, I got to back up. I got, I, I, so you're on top of a $500,000 horse. Was that, was that like a regular thing that happened? Pretty much. Um, you know, they're all not, they're not all that much. Um, you know, there's a few here and there that are kind of sketchy and just need a little help. And, uh, they're just kind of like diamonds in the rough, but I mean, a lot of them were that expensive, honestly. So what was the most expensive horse you think you've ever been on? If you had to guess, um, probably, I think one of them was like 750. What was that horse's name? Um, Cause like, I'm just picturing like the horse races. Like as a kid, I used to stay up late and they would, you know, they'd all have these wacky it was names. C, it was Sea Biscuit. Is that what you're thinking? It was City of Angels. It was a horse in Atlanta. Um, but, but it was just a very, like, it's kind of hard to explain the whole um, industry within, you know, five minutes. I don't want to spend the whole meeting talking about it, but there's just a lot of different, um, like, areas there's a lot of different disciplines so some of the disciplines you know people don't spend as much on horses but I guess you always can there's always that option but it's not as rare in the hunter jumpers or the jumpers or the equitation which is a completely different discipline from like dressage western pleasure barrel racing we don't race um but I I've always just competed and done jumping so I mean wait but so you're you're on top of this City of Angels, $750,000 horse. How old are you at the time? Um, I think I was like 17 by the time I wrote that one. Are you nervous? I mean, that's like, I mean, it's like not even, it's like, like you're like driving like five Lamborghinis almost. Oh, I know. And it's like, it's crazy that people, you know, are that invested in the discipline, but I mean, it's addictive being in the horse, like in the horse industry, just in general. Um, But were you nervous? Not really, no, because I guess at 17, I just didn't even have, like, I couldn't even grasp the reality of it because I really had no idea, you know, like now looking back at 23, it was like, you feel kind of crazy. You're like, I was just like either so naive or just like, wasn't paying attention at all. So, um, I mean, they weren't all that expensive, but like, you know, every once in a while, like they wouldn't even tell you though. That's the thing. Like you just knew the horse was nice. You didn't know how much it was until after the fact. That's probably smart. You're better off not knowing or else you'd be. You didn't know. Well, well, hold on. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta interject here. So what are you doing on the horse? Is this like the, like, are you, cause like I grew up in Houston. Yep. I went to the rodeo. Yep. I know what they, I know what they did with their horses. Yep. Are you like rodeo styling? Are you doing the horse, the dancing thing? Like, you know how they do the little trots? Dressage. Um, yeah. Assage? A dressage. Dressage? Yeah. So, With a D? Okay. Yeah. So basically, um, it's... Teach me. How is this? What's going on? So usually, if you watch the Olympics, it's it's an Olympic sport, but they also have separate disciplines in the Olympics. So they, they do the, the dressage in the Olympics they do the show jumping, which is closest to what I do. And then they have the eventing and the eventing is crazy because they're all solid there. It's like an endurance type thing. So they're jumping these huge, like widespread, like almost like fall, they're like fallen trees put together uh, basically. And there's like ditches and banks and water. And that's really intense. That's not what I do. It's super dangerous, but um, I do the show jumping side of things. Um, It's obviously amplified in the olympics because they're massive like you stand underneath them and you just look up at the fences like they're huge but when the rails come down and they're in like jump cups on the standards that's what i do so it's not to the same level this is way cooler than crossfit zeb we should do this that's why that's why brooklyn's invited onto the podcast right because that's kind of all of us can i bum a horse from somebody i'm a little light on cash i don't think i can afford one of these things I know, but they're, they're such a liability, honestly. Um, my parents, you know, they bought me horse when I was like 10, but it was just, you know, kind of like a fun thing at that point. So then it just got to the point where they were like, we can't even lease an animal like this for you because you can lease out animals and annu- like these horses annually, but it can still be like $50,000 a year. So, you know, it's still crazy. Like it's still crazy amounts of money. Um, now, B, you did this all the way through college. Tell, yeah. tell, tell the guys, um, we'll tell everybody who's, who's going to see this, you know, you, you weren't just like showing up and maybe like competing every once in a while. Like you did this 
it was like four full years of of college. You went to multiple yeah. competitions. Like, what what are some of your favorite competitions? What where did you place best at? Yeah. So I also was I while I was a working student and living like all over the place, I was on an equestrian team based out of Columbia. Um, they're actually in the neighborhood Ascot. I don't know if you guys know where that is located, but it's kind of like an Irmo area, I would guess. Yeah. Um, I was riding out of a team that was based out of there. We'd come together and practice like once a month, but I was competing so much that I couldn't really attend all the practices. So I would just meet them at competitions, but we'd compete through the year and you go ride these horses that you've never ridden before. So you basically draw a name out of a hat, you get on the horse and you compete against other people. So everybody's in the same boat. Um, but it's basically based on, you know, your position, the way that you handle the animal. Um, it's based on a lot of different aspects, but um, I did that through high school and it was called IEA, which is the Interscholastic Equestrian Association, which is then what I did in college, which was um, IHSA, which is the Intercollegiate Horse Show Association. Um, so I did that through high school and then college. Um, high school, my junior year, um, my team and I went to, well, I, honestly, so ninth grade through 12th grade, I went to the national level for that every year of high school. And I always ribboned pretty well. It was either like, you know, first through fifth. And there's like 18 top riders from like the nation there. So there's like a regionals, a zones, and then there's nationals. So regionals, obviously regional. And then zones would be like your 10 nearest states. Um, so you had to place like, you know, first in your region to make it to zones. Zones, you had to place top four. And then nationals, it was just like, you know, there were final, like semifinals and then finals. So I usually was like first through fifth in my divisions through high school um and then my team and i won nationals my junior year as a team so you can either you won you, you you were a national champion in in equestrian <laughs> yeah so more more importantly if you were a national champion why is that ribbon not behind you so that we can see it on the wall it's in a box it's in a, in, it's in a box do you want me to go get it <laughs> why would you not have that hanging up it's in there it's in my living room Wait, wait, so it's not like in a cardboard box in like a closet. You mean like it's framed? Yeah, it's like in a glass shadow. Okay, box. okay. That's, that's, I feel a little bit better. I have all my big ones framed. Next time, next time we do this, if you could just kindly, just for me, have this behind you, that would be fantastic. Go, go get it. It's, it's not that I don't believe you. I 100% believe you. I just, I, what is a horse ribbon? It, oh, okay. We're going, okay. Going on a little adventure. This is great. The house is kind of a mess, but um, hang on, I'll show you. Oh so, oh, so they are up. These are my big-ish ones. So those are, I'm trying to find where the... Dude! It's, one of, it's, either it's the, legit. It's one on the right. You were playing this down way too hard up front. It's just a normal, but it's crazy that people spend this much money that we like literally compete for ribbons and like free prizes. So let's, let's put out there, Brooklyn is a certified badass when it comes to horses. Have you ever been kicked off a horse or what's that, thrown, thrown off a horse, whatever they say? Yeah, I actually had a pretty bad accident when I was like 14 before I started like living with people. Um, and the horse stood up like on its back legs, like it's just two back legs. So the front feet leave the ground and it lost its balance and like fell backwards and like landed like directly on top of me. Like sometimes mm. fall to the side and they kind of just like squish one of your legs and you kind of like find a way to like not get your feet caught and just like stay on the ground when they get back up. But um, yeah, it, it hurt pretty bad. I had like internal like bleeding and bruising like in my thighs. <laughs> and I, I thankfully didn't break anything. I've never broken a bone um, somehow, but I've fallen off probably close, to, probably between like 50 to 75 times. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, but that, sound, that sounds like how I felt. I don't know about you, Jason, after I came back from training with Rich and ended up having to use as much of it. I mean, it's I probably a fair, it's probably a pretty fair comparison if I really think about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. flung to the ground um Ugh. places i worked they had a lot of young like babies so i'd ride like the three and four year olds and they don't really have a concept of behaving so if they don't get sent to be broke by like an actual cowboy when they're young like they're mm. just super crazy so i just dealt with a lot of that but yeah i basically live in with whoever i kind of like bounced around through connections but like some of the ladies that I worked for brought me on because they were pregnant and then they had their child and I would like switch shifts with them to like watch their kid and then go work in the barn. So 
I was kind of like a live-in nanny through high school too, which taught me a lot at a young age because at 15, I was like with infants. So it's just like very eye-opening, which was great. So I kind of learned the best of both worlds, like running, a, you know, an equestrian farm, like a business and then raising a child in a way. No, it's, I mean. So Brooklyn is a badass. Josh has a friend time I'll never touch. And I had macaroni and cheese last night for dinner. That's why I want that to be the takeaway, guys. That's that's what it is. No, no surprise here, J- Jason. How am, Zeb, how am I here today? <laughs> so you know, you know what's really part of this this ugly dude and CrossFit group is everybody gets a nickname. I got to figure out what what um, Josh's is going to be. I might have an idea on that. But Jason, we've got a new nickname for you, man. Uh-oh. I what was wrong with the old one? The old one seemed like pretty fitting. Yeah, it's also your Peloton name, which is not cool. You don't get to choose Hollywood 1768 or whatever it was. Uh, 1738, that was a nod to the Trap Queen song. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Brooklyn gets it. Zeb's too old. Josh, 1738. Uh, At least Brooklyn. Brooklyn's tracking with me. Brooklyn's tracking with me. I'm the only 34-year-old you'll know that just uses that number for everything. So... <laughs> All right. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I'll, I'll send you the song later. It was, uh, thank you. There's a whole thing. Um, I don't need a new nickname though. Yeah. No. So I, I don't want to give it to you now because it was kind of Barry who came up with some of this. So you're going to have to wait in suspense, uh, maybe for a little while before you figure out what your, your new nickname is going to be, but classic Barry, <laughs> classic Barry who, who didn't come today, by the way, has, I've never had a migraine in my life. I mean, knock on wood, thankfully, poor Barry's out with it. But like, have you guys ever had one of those? Not that amazing. No, my mom suffered from them and they were, they would put her out. Like it was bad. Yeah. Josh, you were saying? Yeah, no, not that badly. Um, I mean, I've had headaches. Usually it's like from caffeine withdrawal. So <laughs> that's, I mean, I get, I get that too. And, um, you know, hence the reason I'm sitting over here drinking espresso, but <laughs> um, yeah, I never had one, but I mean, gosh, poor dude. He literally sent out a text this morning and was like, I'm laid up and I cannot be, I, I won't be able to do anything. So we'll just have to continue to make fun of Barry and hope he can join next time. Um, but I was going to, so Josh, back to you really quick. So for context for everybody, one of the things Josh just came on as an intern for the summer. Uh, one of my commitments to him was uh, at the end of this, assuming, you know, he didn't steal all uh, steal our money and product or and he did a decent job we'd invite him to the train with rich uh, that's going to happen in september we didn't know when the dates were but now we've got this what i think is going to be a complete badass uh giveaway that's going to be a combination with with rich and and the mayhem crew and um and was, you know friends of ours at net jets or and private flights and all of it just it'll it'll be launched in a couple of days but um josh is going to come join us for that uh, partly working, partly getting to hang out. And so as the new guy, I didn't know if it would be appropriate that, you know, we spend the first hour when he's in awe of all these heroes, but we make him go up to everybody. He can't say a word. And if anybody asks him a question, Jason, all he can say is I am Batman. <laughs> I mean, is that, it's not technically hazing, but like, would that be frowned upon? Do you think in the world, or could we have a little bit of fun with that? Is, is, oh is our culture too politically correct that we can't, we can't, um, give Josh a bit of a hard time and make him say, I'm Batman. So Rich walks up to him and says, Hey man, I'm rich. And all he can say is I'm Batman. Can, can he change it? Can he change it around a little bit? Cause like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm what open I, to ideas. Let's, let's brainstorm he, this. No, no, no. What I mean by that is like, no, he can only say I'm Batman, but can he be like, Hey, I'm rich. What's your name? Ah, man. Um, I, I, I'm Batman. You know what I mean? Like kind of change change the cadence a little bit cadence and intonation i think as long as it's i'm good, looking out for good. them i'm good i think that's fair and i think expected um, by the crew you know I'm, we're not going to get in trouble from anybody out there in the world of well i'm sure we are i mean half the people are going to hate us anyway i bet no well at least half the people are going to hate the election outcome anyway that's a whole different thing but um so is an hour enough time do you think that's a good you know the trainer training with rich program is that a, is that enough time that's so mean. <laughs> That's so mean. Because I remember the first time I met Rich Froning, uh, and then the second and third, it, it kind of it wears off like anything else, right? But like, it's the last thing you want to do is tell him you're Batman. Because here's the thing about Rich: he's a funny dude. He appreciates humor, right? But he's not going to know what the hell you're talking about 
until much later. So um, That's why it's I think be great. It's, I think it's very fitting. Perfect. Pa- Pan check will be there, I'm sure. Or is this like a is this at Mayhem? It'll yeah, it'll be it'll be at Mayhem. Um, don't know don't know who who on the team is going to be there. Of course, oh, that's you know, very it. The usual folks, um, Tasia and Ali and and everybody else. Rory McKernan, Rowe. I think that's going to be great. I oh, Rory awesome. follows me on the gram now, so I don't know if I'm becoming insta famous or how that works exactly. Um, I coined something new with him the other day. I was really proud of myself. Um, hashtag row is slow. Row. Ro. You know, he goes to row. Ro. Oh. Wow. Row is slow. <laughs> I, it, it was funnier when I said it to myself. I obviously got a great reaction here from everybody. Thanks. I feel like I got like, I got tagged on something on the gram. The older I get, the more I realize you're not supposed to call these things by their full name. You're supposed to like, uh, you're supposed to abbreviate them. Like TikTok, which I'm aware I have no business on as a 34 year old dad. I call it the talk, and that's just in an attempt to seem less creepy. I don't think it works though. So you just took the gram and you moved it over to the talk. Yeah, you add the in front of something and shorten it a little bit. It's how it's how you stay relevant. Zeb. Josh, Josh, are you on TikTok? Because I most certainly am not. Yeah, I ended I ended up making an account just to um, see like keep in the loop. Keeping the loop for like, like Instagram models or something. <laughs> no, um, I'm on like the comedy side of it. It's like, it's funny. There's like a dance side to it, which I have no, like that is not my area. I cannot dance. <laughs> I learned. So my daughters do this song. It's like the wow. Uh, that's it. That's the one. The thing with the touchy. Yeah. Yes. And then they, you know, what's that? It's um, Savage Love. That's the that's yeah. the song. Yeah. I didn't know the song's name. I just knew I heard it. And I was like, that's actually a kind of a catchy tune. Like so I, I figured it out and downloaded it. My wife doesn't know how I know most of the current music because I don't listen to the radio. And she's like, how do you know that song? And I was like, like Trap Queen, Trap Queen, uh, which is, I think, a little pre uh, pre talk. But she's like, how do you know the words here? I'm like, Oh, you know, it's radio. I don't want to tell her. Like I, for whatever reason, will find myself on TikTok. Have you guys do? So everyone, but Zed has a TikTok. Brooklyn, do you, you don't do the talk. All right. Well then this. I, people are like China stealing your data. I'm like, I don't know. I just, Oh yeah. China. They're going to take it anyway. Don't worry. Well then Josh will know. And this is a funny story. Even if you don't talk, um, (laughs) if, if you, if you scroll long enough and Josh, tell me if this has ever happened to you. If you scroll long enough, this, this younger guy will just show up on your screen and he'll be like, Hey man, what's going on? Maybe go outside for a little bit, you know, have some physical activity, go see some sunshine. It's like, and it's like you're shamed because you're like, Oh shit, I've been doing this for like probably 30 minutes. You know, the time gets away from you and you're like, and they know I'm pathetic. All right, cool. That's typically when I'll close it down. Does that have you ever, anybody? Josh? Have you hit that? That has never happened to me. <laughs> Thank, hey, Josh, thanks for having my back, man. Real cool. Real, real cool. <laughs> maybe wow. it's just me. No, it is a, Jason. It's maybe you. You clicked on a button that says that you just like hearing from dudes on TikTok. It's cool. Yeah, may, yeah. It's it's a good good measure they have in there to let you know you're done well so i'm actually i, I kind of think that social media has been both a godsend and a, and a and a curse during well might maybe during all times but especially during COVID 19 mm-hmm. um you know i i go through my social media feed half of it's political which mm-hmm. and, and we're not going to talk politics on this podcast i'll make one political statement which i know is going to be a hundred percent accurate and you guys can take me to the bank on this and here it is Fifty percent of our country is going to be upset after November. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's about as far as we'll go in politics, and we'll leave it. We'll leave it there. But I, I wanted to ask the group, right? Just you know, questions around you know social media or habits or things that they've been doing that they really uh, good habits or bad habits throughout COVID nineteen of, of what's been going on in our lives. And you know, I'd say I probably spent more time on social media, but I've also been like insanely busy on the work front. Uh, we've got a lot of awesome projects underway. This train with Rich coming up is one of them. All the stuff going on Evictus, uh, all the stuff going on in our private equity group. So we're insanely busy. But um, I've had a lot of really good things from a business standpoint. But I've also watched a lot of my friends who've 
who struggled. So it's been mm. pretty sobering on that side. But, you know, what are you guys seeing? Uh, really good stuff and, and maybe not so good stuff during all the COVID. Maybe said another way, are the things you're, are the things you're thankful for or you've realized you're more thankful for during all this? Yeah, I guess, I guess if you guys are okay with me starting, um, I have a few just little comments. Is that okay? Of course. Get out yeah, absolutely. Me. Okay. Um, it's been really great to still in some shape or form feel connected to your friends and family that you can't see, um, especially right now. So I usually go home every summer and visit my family, but I just don't feel comfortable, um, you know, driving or flying to go see them. Uh, flying commercially just to try to keep everybody safe um, and you know it's been great because a lot of awareness about just I guess not problems um, in our society um, but just topics have come up and there's a lot of awareness being spread which is fantastic um, but there's also a downside to that like you know really making sure that you either are not friends or just unfollow for the time being toxic people on social media platforms is really important um, just for everybody's mental health, especially given the political state of the world. So just making sure that you surround yourself with a positive environment, um, given that, you know, we're not as social as we were before, you know, pre-pandemic, um, mm -hmm. making sure that you're in a good headspace and you're not like, um, you know, just you know, looking for the negative things going on in the world. Like it can be really scary. I, I feel like everything's gotten so politicized. It's, yeah. that's actually, you know, I try to promote dissenting opinions on a lot of the Facebook stuff or, or you know, social media stuff that I post. Cause I generally found it in business and in life that if you can't uh, have a healthy debate about conflicting ideas, then uh, you're going to miss out on a lot of things, but it's gotten, social media has gotten so polarizing. Like people are, everything is is like a has to be about a, a, a political statement of some sorts oh it's crazy right but it, it's awesome to surround yourself with people who are willing to have the debates in a healthy way because it's i mean it's always you know great to accept new points of view and learn from people especially as you know josh and i are like the you know the upcoming youth it's like super important for us to just be open-minded coming into the world so did you uh, just call jason and i old she did i totally heard it i totally heard it and i love it <laughs> uh, guys i gotta hop off i got an old-timey telephone to use I'm kidding. <laughs> Jason's still got one of those rotary phones. He probably yeah. She has no idea what you're referencing. That's the best part. That's the best part. I'll show how old I am. And I'm not trying to cut you off, Brooke. But like, so my, my daughter's name is Elliot and her middle name is May. And we call her Ellie May. So you and Josh probably have no idea who that is. But um, if I told Zeb Ellie May, you'd be like, oh, from the, from the Clampets. That's right. So it is funny. I, that makes me realize I am getting older and watching our nation's youth flourish and post <laughs> stuff on the talk. So that's a fair assessment on your end. <laughs> Crazy. Um, yeah. But it is weird how, you know, we, you know, just become used to all these apps popping up like TikTok. What, what, when did that start? Two years, two years ago, a year ago. And now it's like the platform. Mm -hmm. Like, that happens so quickly it's crazy how people catch on like it just in. like it's wild and we can be so interconnected but if it's used in a in a negative way it actually can be very toxic like you said and that's i mean i think i, I think it's a really good point i mean josh what about you I mean, during covid i mean you graduated um and it was a it was a virtual graduate maybe did you get to walk i mean i don't want to put words in your mouth some of your your favorite and maybe um biggest learning experiences throughout this whole process here yeah so um like midway through summer break that's when all the news broke out and it's like oh you're not returning back to Pitt. you mean spring or, spring break right yep spring break yep um so it's like okay um i was actually visiting family so i ended up getting to stay with family basically for like three months um before i moved back into my apartment but um, yeah, it was, it was definitely a learning experience. Uh, we switched to all online classes. Uh, one of my classes was actually astronomy. Um, so <laughs> that was a learning experience since it was all online then. 
Um, Not astrology. You weren't learning about the fact that you're like a, a Taurus and you like long walks on the beach. This was actual real, real science of planets, huh? Yep. Josh is such a Capricorn. <laughs> I don't know if that's offensive or not. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Me neither. He's just got a really good fan time, at least. Beats yeah. High. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I ended up having like a virtual graduation, uh, which at first I was like, oh, this is going to be weird. Um, mm. They're like, are they announcing names? Or what's happening? They didn't announce names. It was actually like a 15 minute video. But it was like a speech from the dean and the chancellor. And then um, they had like previous alumni. Um, some I did not know at all. And then um, Mark Cuban is actually alumni of Pitt University, which I was just like, I heard it. And I was like, oh, OK, but um, that's rad. Yeah, I know. So you did like a like little, um, yeah, go Pitt speech on that's graduation. Cool. Super cool. Don't don't get Jason started on Shark Tank and Taco Bell. That's a whole <laughs> different thing for him. I love the cubes, man. I like the way he does his business. Really He's awesome. stolen so many deals. <laughs> so you graduate. So you graduate. So all right. So now I'm getting a feel for how old I am. So Brooklyn's right around that. The early. So you're both in your early twenties. Yeah, I just turned twenty three last week. So I graduated. Oh my God. Well, happy birthday! And then Josh, when did you graduate? Just recently. Yeah, I just graduated in May, um, and I turned 23 in June, so. Congrats, man. That's awesome. How did you find Zeb, or did Zeb find you? It's always one way or the other. So I found Zeb, so um, I ended up hearing of Victus and kind of started looking into him. I found out um, they're, like, with Yield Scientific and stuff, so I, like, deep dove into it, and then I was just like. You, you creeped him. It's okay. You can yeah, say you creeped him right on. Creeped him. <laughs> <laughs> so i was like this is an awesome company i feel like these guys are going somewhere so i ended up just like emailing the um services at victus health and um was just like hey are you hiring i'm really interested um here's my resume and um ended up getting contacted back and zeb met with me like that week i think so yeah. Dude, that's from there. that's wild. Yeah, that is wild. I love the initiative. That's I know, unbelievable. I, I always have, right? People want to put themselves out there, and uh, yep, it's always been an important characteristic when when I'm looking to to bring people on the team. No doubt. Well, it's just unfortunate that he's now with you. So sorry, Josh. It'll get better, man. It'll get better. It'll get better. Hey, Jason, stop being a jerk. And uh, what's been your your top one or two? favorite or maybe most uh interesting learning experiences during covid yeah covid's weird right um we i don't think we've ever done it before uh we've never had a pandemic i'm 34 which we've determined is pretty old um face masks that's a thing um social media it's gotten kind of tribal um it, it, which is uh i i would argue that's not great you know people are almost like are you a masker are you an anti-masker like and by that, they think they know like where you went to high school and everyone, you know, um, I don't know. I, I think there's, I, I mean, not to be somber about it, but I'd say the scales are kind of tipping. It's almost, it's almost kind of negative right now. Like, I mean, there's a rolling death ticker on the television where I work of COVID and I'm just like, I don't know who that's good for. <laughs> like, I mean, it's good to have awareness and I think we should all be safe, but, uh, you know, as a, as a fresh dad, of a two-year-old, I'm like, man, I just hope kind of all this goes away before she's old enough to remember what this is. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty optimistic. We'll have vaccines and antibodies at least by maybe December, January, you know, phase three trials are starting my background being in healthcare. I track a lot of that stuff. And I, I'm pretty, pretty optimistic that at least uh, the most at-risk folks in, in our, in our country and our planet will, will be able to have access to something. And then it'll, as based on supply chains, it'll all get disseminated out and, you know, I don't, people aren't going to be, I don't think people are going to be forced to take these, but, um, but I think starting, you know, early next year, we're going to have access to it, which means that hopefully life gets back to normal and what hell not to steal all your answers or, or take your time. But I was to say, I was shocked as hell yesterday, you know, Google, Apple, Facebook, and Amazon all reported earnings. Right. And they yeah. destroyed it. And we're all sitting back. I was scared to death back in March when this whole thing hit, I was like, Oh my gosh, like, you know, stock market's going to trade at like 15,000 and it's still sitting at like 26, 20,000 and 27,000. And, um, 
you know, those four tech companies are killing it. And so there's like, there's, there's all this promise amongst the fact that there's all this other otherwise destruction that's going on in the marketplace. It has kind of, it's, it's pushed people to kind of speed certain industries up, right? Like you take Amazon, which don't get me wrong, had already, it's already Amazon, right? But I think even maybe some of your people that are a little more resistant to kind of the change, like DoorDash has to be killing it right now. Uh, Uber Eats, all of that stuff. Just so, hey, it's stuff. Go did ahead. anybody? Did anybody? Um, first time I ever used a grocery delivery service from Publix. We've got Publix down here. They just have to be, a, well, I think, a fantastic grocery store. I'd never used their delivery service until COVID hit, and I now I'm sitting back. My wife and I are like, why in the world would we ever use it anything else again? Unless I have to got to go pick out like a very specific. Right. Like, there's things like avocados. This is going to sound really strange. I've got a thing. You know, unripe avocados suck. So if you're going to go try to make guacamole, you got to make sure that stuff's, you know, look good or you got to let it ripen for a couple of days. So you can't rely on the guys just to pick out anything, but everything else. Seven, like seven is avocados. I mean, whew, heard this speech before. <laughs> no, dude, I'll never go back. Have you guys tried it? Like, is like literally over the past, like I'll go, I'll do an order every week and a half. Yeah. Right. Sometimes the produce is iffy though. Like I got a peach last week that I literally could like stick my finger through to the core. And I was like, who would have picked this out? But like, you know, it's like common knowledge. Don't get a, <laughs> a squishy. But do thing. they, do they, so like, here's my experience with like the bad experiences. Like uh, my wife and I ordered, um, it wasn't groceries, but like a, like a DoorDash. There's this, there's this nice Mexican restaurant next to my house. Uh, it's called Taco Bell. I'm not sure if they have them where you guys are, but like we had them deliver to us. And it was just bad. And I eat enough Taco Bell. I hope I'm saying that right. I eat enough Taco Bell to know when it's good or awful. And we message them and we're like, God, dude, you're missing like half the order. And it's really bad. Like instantly got a refund. All of our money and the free shitty food was in my stomach. And I'm like, that's, I, I mean, look, you can only be so upset at that point. So like, I'm thinking about your peach, right? Like, do they, do they just refund the peach? Were you like, this is a shitty peach? I haven't even bothered, honestly. I, it was like one. Pick piece. your battles, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it, and what's a, what's a peach cost? Like seventy five cents or something, right? The grocery store. I don't like. I don't even like the grocery store in general before the pandemic. Like I was like, there's just people everywhere. There's kids sneezing <clears> on everything. Like you know, you're just kind of like grossed out at the grocery store, um, just naturally. So if I can avoid it and save that time, I mean, what the charge is like fifteen dollars, fifteen to twenty dollars per order total with like the service charge and then the tip. So it's like kind of a no brainer, you know, if it saves you two hours of your life. You know? Right. The time save. It's awesome. I'm, I was blown away at how amazing it was, but again, only for 95% of the stuff, there's certain things that I still have to go to the store to actually get. Well, I bet Barb with the kids, it's like, it's a game changer. Game changer. Yeah. Just having to wrangle the kids up, whether they're good, bad, or indifferent. I mean, it's it's a whole other chore. But it goes back to your point you were making, Jason, around like the pandemic has escalated the dying of certain industries or or escalated technology that made life more convenient. Um, so the Amazons and the home deliveries of the world have, uh, and, you know, social media platforms have all obviously gone through the roof, Netflix included, you know, et cetera. It's an interesting catalyst to either the good or bad, like you lose what JC Penney's and um, I mean, what, there's a lot of big box that's just Sears, JC Penney. I mean, I'm told uh, I got a bunch of friends. We'll have uh, one of our buddies on who runs a bunch of restaurants. You know, at some point I've been told that half the restaurant chains that we know won't make it back when this is done. I don't like that, but I, I mean, I'm sure I think, a lot of people don't, right? I think Taco Bell <laughs> will be fine. You should be, you should still be able to watch your show. Oh, okay. Okay. As long as it doesn't mess with my schedule, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, we're getting we're getting close to the top of the hour. Um, I had a couple other things, but we'll save those for next time. So uh, obviously, thanks everybody for for joining. Uh, anyone who tunes in gets to watch uh, Team Victus Podcast Number One, our awesome panel, if you will, Jason Saunders. Josh Follow me on the real Jason Saunders on Instagram. <laughs> That's right. Don't forget, don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. So you can tell. I'm 34, but I watch it's, a lot of that. Stuff. It's not you're not you're not the husband of Marty. That doesn't that's not your Instagram handle. <laughs> that's why I'm gonna change it to Marty's husband. Mm -hmm. That husband. seems appropriate. Yep. Simple. Uh Josh and Brooklyn, thanks for joining. Uh we will catch back with everybody.
next time on episode two, hopefully with Barry feeling better and um, bring on an, one or two special guests. Uh, in the meantime, oh, big deal going on uh, next week in case we don't gather before then. Our boy, Michael Chandler, going to fight Benson Henderson. Man, so obviously super excited for, for Chandler. Um, he's just a, such an awesome dude. Uh, hope he kicks the, kicks the crap out of him uh, and does what he does best. But, you know, win, lose, or draw, we hope he wins. But he's just an amazing human being. I, I, I love that guy. Uh, super excited for his future. He's a machine. He is a machine. He's a machine. You know what's crazy is his, his, uh, his contract is up with Bellator. So he becomes a free agent. Which oh, is that right? which essentially means that he gets to go out there and, you know, see what else is going to be in the marketplace. And, um, you know, I think it could be very favorable for him, especially coming off of a victory on Friday. So he's just a good dude. We'll talk about, we'll talk more about some of our brand ambassadors next week. Um, there's a lot to, lot to share out there, but in the meantime, everybody stay safe, uh, live victorious. Thanks for everybody joining. Stay out of trouble. Jason, enjoy your Taco Bell. We will see everybody soon. Take care, everyone. See you.